Howdy meeps, and welcome to the Meeple Syrup Show. Hey everybody, we are live and in full color, I guess. <laughs> welcome to the Meeple Syrup Show, and I'm here with uh, Jesse and... Myself and unfortunately Erica can't come out tonight. Um, she's busy with other stuff, but that is okay. Jesse, what are you doing? You said we're live and in full color. I was just putting on display all of the bright colors that happen to be oh, near me at this desk. <laughs> Why are you just showing your hair? Actually, because your hair isn't very bright anymore. No, it's going to get redyed tonight or tomorrow. Um, oh, really? Yeah. We just bought oh, the dye on. Well, yeah. there you go. Interesting. So um, here we are, VLive, and we are going to actually, you know, you're going to start showing our our trailers and things. So I would like people out there in Maple Syrup Land, if you see that our crawlers aren't working properly, let us know in the feed and we can uh, hopefully refresh the screen and try that again. I talked to technical services uh, over the last week and that's what they're saying to do. They're super responsive. So thank you to the Be Live team for helping us out and for helping us be live. Go. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Uh, Zach and Eric are coming on a little bit later, but right now they're in the feed. So thanks to them for moderating that. Um, so D Jesse, what is dissecting the game all about? What are we gonna do on this segment? We are going to take design scalpels to a beloved game. Okay. I mean, beloved might be pushing it, but uh, we're taking it to a game that we've at least all played. How's that? Yeah, that's right. And I mean, um, so tonight's game is Istanbul, the dice game, and it's not necessarily beloved, you, but it's also not hated. Can you throw up some pictures of it? I, I, I'm sure I can. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I can try to share my screen. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to send that to the broadcast. Yes, there we go. So in the middle here, we have the rules for Istanbul, the dice game. This is a game that was released in 2017 by AEG, All Direct Entertainment Group. Uh, it was originally published by Pegasus Spiel in Germany. Germany, And it's by Rudiger Dorn. Rudiger Dorn is one of my favorite designers. He did Montana. He did, obviously, the Istanbul series. Uh, and he was responsible for games like Las Vegas, uh, which is one of my favorite dice games ever. So it's super good. Yeah, when Istanbul the dice game came out, I was like, yeah, I think I'll give that a go because I don't mind Istanbul. Mm -hmm. um, Istanbul is not my favorite and? of his games, but it's a good game. And how do you feel and about Istanbul the dice game? Personally, I actually liked it a lot. Um, now, I mean, caveat, I played it at Breakout Con, was taught it by Karen Halla, one of the greatest game teachers in Southwestern Ontario. Uh, and I played it with Carrie, my wife, and then I played it again after that with uh, Helena, Helena, oh, Helena, not Helena, and Josh Capel uh, and Carrie and myself. So it was, it was a good game for that. Uh, and that's why I appreciate it because it was quick to pick up, quick to learn. And there's some actually really neat design decisions in there in terms of how uh, the game is played. So, uh, Jesse, why don't we go over how the game is played? I was just going to say, yeah. Okay. Do, do you want to walk through that? Um, can you flip to, like, a setup or something? Sure. Let's flip to a setup. Boom. Mm. Let's try to teach this game. <laughs> oh, uh, that, that might be asking a lot, but go ahead. Uh... So there's a setup. I'll see if I can zoom in on that. Can I zoom? Kita, there we stop. Go. All right. Okay. Um, sorry, Kita is now growling. Um, <laughs> right. So there's the there's the all of the components of Istanbul the dice game. It's pretty compact. Um, sorry, I'm trying to keep the dog from taking over the stream. Okay, want. well, I'll, I'll explain it. Yeah, do you so, want to run with it? Sorry, neighbor yeah, yeah, yeah. just got home, so. It's okay, so, uh, yes, my, my hair's a mess, sorry. But uh, we have here, in the middle of the board, we have, uh, number one is the board, uh, where we have a bunch of little tracks and also little areas where they are color-coded for different types of resources that are actually on the dice. So I guess the dice are the most important things to talk about. In the dice, there are basically 
well, there are six faces. There's six sided dice. There's one face for each of the <laughs> dogs, each of the each of the resources, uh, which are like I think fruit, spices, um, cloth, and um, jewelry, I believe. And then there's an icon for cards, which are uh, like just things that you can use to get things. And then there is a wild. A wild oh no, actually it's gold. There's no wild, it's gold or coins. So yeah, you have six coins. dice and you're gonna it's roll kind them. Of a wild. Yeah, they're kind of wild. And you roll all your dice. Uh, you start with a certain number of dice and you eventually wanna buy power-ups to get more of those dice. Uh, and when you roll your dice, you can basically use any of the faces to do what they say, uh, which is down here. And we'll see what it says here. So you roll the dice. Uh, you ro roll five dice to start. And as you get more mosque tiles, you can roll more. Um, if you have some moss tiles, uh, the first thing you're going to do is take any income that you get from them. So they can give you extra dice. They can give you free gold. They can give you a free card draw. And um, in the dice rolling phase, you can use crystals uh, to re-roll as many dice as you want. And you can discard as many crystals as many times as you want to re-roll again. So it's actually a very free game in terms of re-rolls. Uh, you just are limited by the number of crystals you have. After you decide to stop rolling, then you carry out the actions. Uh, normally, you have two actions, but you can get more with the moss tiles. And after you do that, then you pass the dice. And it's really quick. But the actions are as follows. So you can, if you see this little grid over here on the right hand side of the screen, this is exactly telling you what you can do with the dice. Any of the letter A's and B's and C's um, are show, and the four colors are saying, does your dice show one of the four colored resources? Um, and then A and B are not the same. A and A are the same. A, B, and C would be four dice that are, or three dice that are different. A, B, C, D would be four dice that are different. And what you're doing here is you're rolling your dice and then seeing what you can basically buy at the market with those dice. Essentially, you want to get crystals, these big red crystals, like it's a rubies, uh, not the blue crystals, the red crystals. And once you get them, then that's wonderful. You can, you can. That's victory points. Yeah, they're basically, once you get enough of them, depending on how many players there are, you win. Great, yeah. let's do that. It's a race. Win. Yeah. Um, and pretty much almost any die roll you have is useful in some way. Um, the other thing that you get to do that's really cool in this game is you get to kind of store your die rolls in a way. In that any dice roll, any die that you roll that's a pair of of this of something, you can trade in for a token or a tie, a, like a little token of that thing, so that you are basically at a two to one ratio. They're better as dice faces, but if they're not useful to you, you might as well use them to get that token that you can later use on your next roll yeah. as that item. So. That's sort of the game. It, it's really, yeah. really fast. Um, gold and the cards are sort of the only different things. Um, there's wild tokens that could be one of well, any of the various yeah. tokens. Gold is just gold is just another, as I recall, it's just another kind of resource. Um, there's ruby tracks that have gold on them, and that's yes. all gold is used for. And so you can either be accumulating the goods to get rubies, um, or you can accumulate gold to get rubies. Um, essentially, it's a consolation prize that eventually adds up to a victory point. Um, gold. Yes. Um, um, oh, uh, that weird noise in the background, David, is Jesse's wife. <laughs> She's talking on the phone. Sorry. Um, yeah. We have to get a little bit of audio isolation. So, I mean, if you can... Doing the best rent, I can. Rent a bigger house for Jesse? I mean, that can do it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 600 square foot apartment. She's right. taking she's taking her call in the kitchen because yeah. it's the only other room we have. Um, right. So this this is showing all of the actions, uh, what they mean, and you can see how um, you can draw cards. You can use their powers immediately. Yeah, uh, the cards are really so, cool. This is a cool thing about the game. Yeah, I was going to say there's two more things you need to actually talk about, um, and that is the cards, and yes. uh, and then briefly mention what the mosques do. Yeah, sure. So the cards are cool because um, when you roll a die face as a card, you get to draw, you know, the, those many cards per icon. 
one card per icon, basically, if you're going to choose cards. So you have two actions. So you get to choose which things you're going to buy. Am I going to use these dice to get one thing and these other dice to get another thing? Um, and when you get bizarre cards, they're called bizarre cards, you draw it and you turn it over. And a bizarre card, I'm going to show you it's one. Bizarre. <laughs> How bizarre. Um, here they are. There's a couple... Oh, they actually don't show. Oh, there they are. Okay, good. So here are some of the bizarre cards. And you see that they have a split on the top or the bottom. And this is really interesting because usually what it's going to give you as the person who is the active player is a good option. And then you get people who every other player can also do the thing some on the bottom thing. if they pay for it usually or something that's a there's little worse. No, yeah, it's not, there's no concrete rule about like what they're gonna get to do, but generally speaking, you as the player who bought the bizarre card is gonna get something great and everybody else is going to get something okay. And sometimes they can't get anything because you look over there and you say, oh, they don't have that resource. So I'm gonna elect to do that one so mm -hmm. they can't get anything. And so I thought that was one of the smart design decisions in this game. I really enjoyed that part of it. Uh, the other part's the mosques. So let's go look at the mosques for a second here. Um, the mosque tiles are basically like an engine-ish thing. They're not really an engine because you don't pump stuff through them quite so much. But at the beginning of every turn, you collect your income, they're, for lack of a better word, from there. They're like power-ups. They're, they're basically power-ups. They, they, yeah. That's exactly right. They're buffs. They give you a, a static bonus that's going to apply for the rest of the game. And they are amazing. They are, they are my go-to things, right? Um, yeah. It's just, just like in a worker placement game, how usually the smart thing to do is get another worker as soon as you can. If the game allows you to get another worker, get one. Um, yeah. And what happens with the moss tiles is there's moss tiles that get you free gold every turn. There's moss tiles that get you crystals, which, as you remember, are re-rolls every turn. There are moss tiles that allow you to have an extra action every turn. So you might have five dice, which are normally will give you two actions, but now you have five dice that give you three actions, or five dice that give you four actions, depending on how many of these mosques you buy of a particular type. Um, the other mosques will give you extra dice, and that's even more powerful, I think, than the actions, uh, because that's what you want to do. And we'll actually talk about the, how the goal, the game works in the end, how to get the the, the rubies. And then there's other. Um, there are kind of enginey ones that say, when you carry out a certain action, also grab a certain type of good marker, uh, which is that free sort of token yeah, that, it turns, that will turn into yeah. a resource of a type. So and let's talk about the resources. Yeah, that's right. Um, I mean, th I don't know that there's too much more that we need to say. Um, oh, just how you how you get the rubies, I guess, is the only thing. Sure. Uh, uh, yeah, so on the, the central board, there is four, five, seven. There's seven tracks. Uh, each of which is full of rubies. Um, and your goal in the game is to get a fixed number of them. There's four tracks that correspond to the colored resources, blue, yellow, red, green, which have some thematic layer that I don't remember what it is. Um, but essentially, rings. Yeah, essentially you, you need to get sets of that color and then you can grab Aww. the ruby accordingly. Um, and you can see the, the green track is in the middle of the screen there. And what's important about this is as you pick rubies up, the cost to get the next one is going to increase. Yeah. So um, the amount you pay, it. yeah. Um, the amount yes. you pay is is equal to the highest number that's showing, or the number that's closest to the next ruby to be picked. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, no, keep going. You're doing great. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, you like you like cut out on me. Um, oh. My connection's competing with Helena's. So uh, the other two, the other tracks are, there's a track that is to do a set of four, um, uh, one of each color. And then as people take rubies, you have to add an extra one to that set. And so it gets more expensive. And then there's a track that just costs lira or gold to buy the ruby. And then the last one is that as soon as you get your third mosque, you get a ruby. Fourth. Fourth, is it fourth? Um, it was some number. I was the only player in the game. It's, uh, it's, it. five, it's five if you are playing less than four right. players. It's four yeah. if you're playing four players. Right. But um, yes. So they're, they're basically 
three or four different ways to get rubies. One of them is Moss Tiles, yeah. the other is Lyra. Then it's sets of the same dice faces or resources. And then it's mm -hmm. different, all, it's all mixed. unique, re yeah, mixed resources. Yeah. Um, and so now that you know all the little components and how the game works, that's really it. You're just rolling dice and seeing what you get for that and passing the dice around. So it's really, really quick. Uh, yeah. Jesse, what did you like about this game? Cool, yeah. So my overall feeling about Istanbul Dice was pretty meh. Um, right, I wasn't I know that. enthralled by it. I know, but the meeps don't. Um, <laughs> and uh, it felt like a really well-designed, well-oiled game. And that's not what I look for in a board gaming experience. Um, but there were definitely things that I liked about it. So, um, and I mean, this is you know an important meta lesson for designers that are watching. When you play a game, even if you don't like it, you should still be able to figure out some good things about it, as well as what other people enjoy in it, even if it's not your type of game. And then find some cool mechanics to steal and use on your own. So um, <laughs> I really like that I had quick turns. Um, because in my mind, this game is sort of ideal in settings where you want to actually be having conversations with people. Um, contrary to some of the discussion in the comments, people saying things like, oh, those bizarre cards make it look like you could pay you should pay attention on other players' turns. I think that's not true at all. Um, I, when I played the game, we fully disengaged when it wasn't our turn. We carried on conversations with the players whose turn it also wasn't. And then as soon as dice were plopped in front of you, you quickly absorbed the board state, rolled the dice, did your turn, and then went back to chatting and drinking wine. Um, and it Which fit really okay. well. No, and that, that's perfectly fine. It fit really well in that context. And the fact that turns were fast and the board state was easy to absorb um, really helped that along. Yeah, the board state is super clean. Um, yeah. The idea that, you, if you see it in the middle there, you set it up with, the gems covering everything except the spaces that don't have a red dot. Red dot means put a gem there at the clean, at the startup. Yeah. And it just makes everything really clean because every other number on the board is obfuscated until it needs it to matters. be shown. Until it matters. Yep. Um, and it's lovely. I'm, and I'm, I'm sure you would have mentioned this if uh, you had have been the first one to talk about specific things you liked. Um, but mechanically, I love the pivot in the game. Mm -hmm. um, the most critical decision you make is when to stop acquiring mosques and when to start focusing your efforts on rubies. Yeah. And along the way, you should pick up one or two while you're still accumulating mosques, uh, while they're cheap as sort of an opportunity thing. But there's this, you have to make this critical decision of, uh, do I get another engine tile to make it so that my next turn will be even bigger or do I start going for it? Um, yes, I believe that's true. And well. that's, that's the most important decision you'll make in the entire game. When do you just go for it? Um, and that's cool. Uh, and the last thing that I really like about it is that somehow, and I think this is all the things that you pointed out as clever design elements, um, this is a low luck dice game. Right, it's true. Um, dice are the thing you're gonna touch the most, use the most, interact with the most, and yet luck plays a very small role in the overall determination of the winner. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. Eric says, "Guys, stop liking my con, like my, my comment. It was incorrect." I'll show you the <laughs> comment that he posted. This is a comment. Oh, I saw it. I like that the cards make you pay attention to each other's pile as well. And okay, so uh, it does sometimes. Eric is not incorrect, not totally incorrect. Anyways, Eric is smiling in the green room. I can see him in the lobby smiling. Uh, so what can happen is when you collect moss tiles that give you free cards at the beginning. If you collect a lot of them, you get to choose which ones you want to use. Uh, and that's when that choice becomes critical, where you will pay yeah. attention to other people's piles and say, well, um, you know, you can't actually benefit from that because you don't have any red tiles. And it says you only get six liras if you trade in a red tile. You don't have a red tile. I get six liras anyways. Great, I'm going to do that one instead of taking one that might give me something, but also give you something. So yeah. there's a little bit of strategy and a little bit of watching other people's uh, yeah. tableaus and 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 their areas in that part. Um, I think Jesse, you hit on most of the really clean and cool design things that I thought were in there. Uh, I like how everything happens on a very set phase. You know, you can't re-roll once you stop re-rolling, but re-rolling is really easy to do really freely done so that's to yeah. me very very cool um 
and, and it's a resource and you choose when to do that. So yes, the, the mm -hmm. biggest, the biggest, biggest single decision you're going to be making is when do I stop rolling? Not for ro rolling for, um, when do I stop buying moss tiles and when do I start honing in on the gems? Because the first to finish is the winner. That's it. You don't get to, yeah. you know, keep going. Um, <clears throat> but there are other decisions that you make that are critical within the dice game itself. Uh, when you choose to say, well, you know what? It might actually be better for me to take a token now. So next time when I roll, I can go for that bigger thing. And that's usually mm -hmm. just for acquiring the gems. Um, but a lot of times those free tokens that you get, you think they're just little freebies, but they end up being a huge deal in the end game because they are static you know they are a known factor in your decision making process uh there is one other type of tile that i didn't mention which is the brown crates which are wild tiles like you did mention wild tiles oh i did okay and they can be any of the four resources and so sometimes you're like oh maybe i should just trade for that uh because it's very powerful um i personally when i play this game i like to build up my mosques as uh, Helena was commenting on, you would. Uh, and then I, I really do like looking for more rerolls because more rerolls means more options for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I really quite like that. Um, hey, this is pretty funny. Jamie Jones just made a comment. And Jamie says, for the most part, I've not really seen a good dice version of a game that invokes what the original game was. Um, and Jesse uh, had made a comment when we were planning this. He said, well, you know, if I was offered the choice of playing Istanbul, the dice game, three to four times, which is about the same time that it would take to play Istanbul, the board game, once, he would 110% always play Istanbul, the board game. Yeah. For the same amount of time, right? I mean, that's that's what yeah. we're looking at. Uh, bang for the buck in the amount of time, Jesse would prefer to do that. And for me, I'd say that, you know, that is definitely similar. I do like Istanbul, the game, quite a bit. Um, but it depends on the audience or the, the rest of the, the gaming party, maybe time of day. So when we played this, it was, again, at Breakout Con. No, sorry, not Breakout Con, at Base Camp. And my wife was there. You know, she's a gamer, but she's not a heavy, heavy gamer. She's more of a much more casual gamer. And this fit perfectly in the time span that we had with um, J uh, Josh and Helena. They, you know, it was kind of let's learn a game while the kids are asleep type thing. So that was pretty cool uh, for yeah. us to learn it and play it and say, oh, that was good. Uh, but I think you're right. It's definitely not meaty. And for that, we are actually going to bring on our co-host. So uh, let's see what we're going to do here. We're going to welcome our moderators. And I'm going to get rid of that. And um, I'm going to bring in these people. Oops, that's uh, not a person. Hel Helena has asked if there are any dice games that are better than their full game counterparts. Um, and I just want to say, good question. I haven't played every dice game and its full game counterpart, but I do believe, in my opinion, there's a Dune dice game that's available as a print and play that is better than the Dune board game that it was inspired by. So there's at Hello. least... Hello! 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 Is this hey. mic working? <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to welcome to the show uh, one Mr... I, how come I'm not able to do this? Oh, that's why. Mr. Eric Slauson, how are you doing, sir? It's me. Hello. Yeah. What's going on? Not much. Just hanging out, watching Just meeples. Watching <laughs> meeples. Okay, good. And we have Zach Connolly. How are you, Zach? I'm excellent. How are you guys doing? I'm doing actually well. unable to see Jesse, like completely. You're, uh, you're unable to see him at all? Can't see him. Might want to put that in the comments to be live. Really? Oh, I can I'm see him. I'm a ghost. I have a garbage computer, so I'm lucky. <laughs> can you can you hear Jesse though? No. Could you? I've been could you, I've been watching him uh, on the phone here, so I got a bit of a delay. Interesting. That's really neat. Okay. Well, we'll figure it out. Um, so, can you hear Jesse now? Oh, I should talk. Can you hear uh, him? No, can't say that. Well, Helena's talking to me in the comments, so other people can hear me. Yes. Interesting. Okay. So um, we'll we'll translate any Jesse-isms over to Zach when, when we're talking. But we wanted to talk right now about uh, some of the questions that are coming up in our in our actually feed in our actual feed right now. So other. So to be clear, 
to game conversions. Yes, yeah, Jeff. I was going to say, but just to be clear for the audience, we're, we're switching now to a more general topic because our two lovely mods did not do their homework and have not played as Temple with this game. <laughs> well, and, and in their clear, defense. <laughs> yes, in their defense, we to be asked fair. them to jump on like two hours ago. So Also that. <laughs> I did watch a couple of videos. <laughs> oh, did you? And I, okay. I actually wanted to talk to Jesse about this, but he seems to have made a funny comment on this. Uh, I'm actually going to jump out real quick and see if I can jump back in. Okay, we'll see you in a sec. Cool. Okay, so Zach's going to pop out, and we'll just start with the three of us. So Dave Tomei nice. asks, is the point really to capture the original or give a similar experience but with a decent difference to all make most make it its own game? Okay, I, I'm reading that and I'm getting confused, but I get what he's saying. So what do you guys think? Is the is the point of taking a big game like Istanbul, Istanbul's not a small game, and drawing it down and distilling it to a dice game, is it to give a similar experience, but with a decent difference to make it or to make it its own game? What do you think? Eric? For, for me, uh, I would imagine it is to get people like me to play the game <laughs> or to get more interested. Um, as somebody okay. who kind of, oh, hey, Zach. He's hey, back. guys, I'm back. And Jesse, I can see you now. Hi. Good, good, good. Right. Okay, explain yourself there, Eric. Explain yourself, um, sir. As a, if, you know, I imagine walking around a con and seeing Istanbul, the game set out on a table, it's almost definitely a no for me. Um, I just see resources and cubes and trading and a bazaar. And I'm, you know, I've, I've been lost on the theme already. Um, and, you know, as Jesse was saying, I can probably learn something from it. So if I get invited to play it, I'll play it, but I'm not going to be excited to. Um, but if I see dice and I see, oh, okay, there's these little gems, you know, it's a little bit more approachable visually for somebody who, you know, enjoys a lighter experience or a faster experience. Um, something with a, a little bit less AP maybe. Um, so I think it's it's widening your audience. Um, and, you know, maybe they start by playing the dice game and then eventually check out the, the bigger game later. So it's kind mm -hmm. of a win-win. Here's, here's a good question. Uh, Brad Bachelor asks, uh, I think there's something about dice that is symbolic that says, hey, this game is going to be lighter and shorter, like Eric is saying. So he's basically backing it up here. And he says, I mean, are there any dice versions of games that are longer than the original? Would you ever design one that is? Zach, I'm going to point, point this question at you. What do you think? Would okay, you... well, uh, the ones I can think of, I've been saying in the comments, were uh, Bang the Dice Game, which I think was just miles better than Bang the Card Game. Okay, why? Um, Bang the Card Game just did, uh, I think Jesse even mentioned this when we were talking earlier, was a lot of random elements that were, weren't easily mitigated. Um, something about having those random elements appear in a dice game was just more palatable. It's okay. Like, it's yeah, nice. like, it's a dice game. You went into so this knowing so some random... Yeah, yeah. Um, but then I take a game like uh, like Roll for the Galaxy. Right. Uh, Race for the Galaxy. Big, meaty, crunchy game. And Roll for the Galaxy, it, it's, it's still, you know, a, a hefty, hefty game. Right, that's true. So I don't know that uh, – well, I feel like that's a better example of a game that took dice and didn't water it down. Okay. That's cool. Um, Jamie Jones is talk talking about, like, an example of what David was asking, uh, Pandemic versus Pandemic the Cure. Have you guys mm. played Pandemic the Cure? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, <laughs> okay, Jesse, yes. uh, I'll point this one at you. Jess, what's the – Sure. What is your thoughts on the differences and similarities? And was do you think that might have been the attempt to make a game that's similar but not really the same? I mean, you make similar kinds of decisions, but I think Pandemic the Cure is a lot more exciting than Pandemic. Pandemic oh, okay. is very, like, calculating and projecting, whereas Pandemic the Cure is more, like, panicked and hope and like just like go for it just go for it ah what's happening um there's a life like there's always a lot more emotion around the table when we play the cure i actually like the cure better than base pandemic because of that um so i actually think it's a really good example of two games that approach the same theme in the same world from a completely different perspective and they give you something different 
experientially. Uh, mm. Yeah, they're very different experiences. Yeah, thanks, Jamie, for uh, bringing that up. We have another question here. Let's just find it. Helena's asking, are there any dice games that are better than their full game counterpart? So I wouldn't say Pandemic and Pandemic the Cure are the same game, or even trying to distill the game, whereas Istanbul yeah. and Istanbul the dice game are sort of leaning in the same direction, but they're still not, uh, I don't know. Um, I, I think I think Bang the Dice Game is one of the only ones that I can oh, really I think of that is better than the card version. Now, um, there's actually um, an interesting flip on all of this. Yeah. Cas uh, not Castle, sorry. Yeah, Castles of Burgundy was mm. originally a dice game, and then they made the card game. Uh, I don't know if any of you played the card game version. Have you? No, not yet, no. Um, it's exactly like Castles of Burgundy, but it winds up actually taking up more of the table, so it misses the mark on trying to distill it down to a smaller box game. I mean, it's just this giant tableau that you're building uh, as opposed to just allocating the dice on the player board. So uh, it's the complete reverse of what we're talking about. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Um, I think Eric, oh, Eric asked this question, but you're you're here, but I'm going to ask the question. I won't point it to you because that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, Eric, <laughs> but, uh, Eric asks, are these games usually designed by the same designers? Do companies contract someone else to develop the dice version? Do they sign some other person's game and then reskin it to be a sequel of an established IP? That is a good question. Jesse? Um, the, the stories on every dice game version of an actual game, I think, are mostly unique. Um, so as an example, um, I think it's called, I think, and I might get this wrong, but Sen can correct me, a game now that's called Dark Moon oh, yeah, originally yeah. existed as... Um, Battlestar Galactica, the dice game, and was made as a print and play game for fun, um, just because someone wanted to make a dice game version of Battlestar Galactica. Um, similar is true of the Dune dice game that I was um, uh, praising earlier while you guys were trying to get on, um, which is a print and play game on BGG that you can get that I think is leaps and bounds better than the base, the Dune game that it's based on, in part because it plays in like a third of the time. Um, meanwhile, you get games like, um, so, uh, Pencil First Games just put out Herbaceous Sprouts, um, which is the dice game version of Herbaceous. Also, that's one that's a little bit heavier and a little bit meatier than the game it's based on. So that one definitely went the other way. Um, and that was, I believe, made by the same designer as the base game. Um, and if I recall correctly from conversations with Edo, it was specifically, like, said, hey, do you want to try and make a dice game? So <laughs> the stories are unique to every every uh, every game. Yeah, oh. BSG Express was uh, Dark Moon, yeah. who is uh, Evan Derek. What um, about um, uh, Biblios? Wasn't that uh, was that the same designer as Sprouts, Herbaceous Sprouts? Finn, yeah. right? Yeah, it's 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 Steve Finn. Steve Finn. Finn. Yeah, I mean Biblios Dice um, was fantastic. Actually, that was a good uh, switch over. Was Biblios not a dice game before? Wasn't there a card game of it? I yeah, there was. It was right, but it was. Yeah. Like it had. It always had dice. But is there a Biblios the dice game? Yeah, there is. Oh, I haven't yeah. played it. That's hilarious. Oh, okay. had... I got nervous for a second. I'm reaching for my phone till I check BGG. No, it's okay. It's all right. <laughs> so we've got a couple comments here. Uh, Carcassonne versus Carcassonne, the dice game. They have almost nothing in common, Jamie says. Uh, Daryl's saying that Pandemic the Cure is more exciting, so he agrees with you, Jesse, and easier to teach. Uh, however, he thinks the Cure will never be popular. Not the band, the game. Uh, it was just it's, it's too late. Boys don't cry. Boys don't cry. Uh, he agrees that Bang Dice is definitely better. Andrew Wolf, uh, now with Mondo, says Raw and Raw the Dice Game are both fun but play and feel pretty different from each other those are i haven't actually played those i like oh, i like raw so i should try that um a lot of people uh peter lipson who is from breakout con says that roll for the galaxy uh he thinks that he's heard many people say they prefer the race for the galaxy and then we have helena talking about uh and david talking about roll through the ages um 
she said that she will never sit down to play through the ages so that it's too long but she will play role through the ages that's pretty funny okay yeah. so so if and while while we're going through the yeah, comment yeah. history since we've got eric here eric back to istanbul dice yes. you made a comment earlier about how don't get me started on the player aids. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah let's get started on the player aids. <laughs> let's get started on the player aids you yes. have some knowledge. What's going on um, here? <laughs> well, I, as I said, I watched some videos. Um, I watched Rado's video and then um, Sam's uh, video from the Dice Tower. Um, and in both, you know, they, oh, this is, this is uh, Istanbul, the Dice game. And this is how you score the points. So I saw the, the, you know, converter chart and it reminded me of like when I'm cooking and I'm like, okay, what is, you know, how many <laughs> tablespoons is a teaspoon? And what, you know, when do I need this and this and this? Um, and so I, I imagine everybody needing one of those, you know, for at least the first time you play it and then you kind of understand the economy. Um, but- Oh, you really actually do. Yes. Everybody, everybody does get one. Oh, oh okay. So yes, yeah. that's, that is, that's, that's a lot. Um, and you know, it's I like the economy and that you have all these different options and ways that you can spend your dice. Um, but it's it's also like a lot, you know, just oh, okay, is it these two and then I can make this, or I can use this third one. And um as as Jesse was saying, it's you know, they play it pretty quickly, uh, I guess because you're you're used to it and you can kind of flow through it. But um and and Rado's video. It's, I think it's 15 minutes long and 10 minutes of it is him explaining all the different things you can do on one roll. Like just five dice, he rolls them once and says, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. So, um, yeah. Well, I mean, yes, you can, you, you can do all those things. The thing is that there is really probably one or two best things to do with right. all the options that you have. So Rado's just explaining all the options, but... Yeah. Uh, cognitively, you can probably wipe out eighty percent of, of those. Yeah, right. Over 80. Yeah. It's it's there's a, there's not a lot of there's there's definitely better things to do, right? Um, but, there, there's yeah, definitely Eric, an incongruence in that. Yeah. I was yeah. gonna say, Eric, do you actually think you would have a harder time navigating the um, the heuristics of that reference card in the dice game or the actual uh, spaces on the board? Do you think you'd have more AP with that? Um, well, I think as Sin was saying, I loved the board uh, because of how, like, that made more logical sense of, okay, right. I only need to pay attention to what is, you know, covered or not covered. Right. Um, and this number means this, and, you know, I can go on this track or I can go on this track. Um, so, you know, I don't, I, spatially, I think it, it made more sense, whereas the the, the player aid, you know, is um, a list of, of options. And then a similar thing happens in a... Um, uh, I don't know, like some of the adventure games or some other games where you have a player A and it says on your turn, you have these actions and it's like seven bullets, you know, mm -hmm. that, I don't know, just a, a little bit of anxiety, um, even though really as Sin, you were saying on my turn, probably two of them only make sense. I'm still constantly in the back of my mind trying to memorize all seven so that I don't, you know, mess up. So, um, yeah, you have a little performance anxiety. Yeah, that's why yeah. I play lighter games. Right, maybe. Uh, yeah. Unlike this one, which Dave Tomei says he's going to design Mega Civ rule for the epoch right now. I like <laughs> it. It's, a one hour, it's Mega Civ, the one hour dice game. Uh, Bonus Darryl's points if saying, it uses Mega Foam Dice. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mega Foam Dice, as big as Jesse's head. Uh, Daryl's saying that Isfahan is a great, great dice driven game. It was a board game, but it's being re-released re as Corinth this year. Hmm, how do you know um, how to pronounce that? Isfahan? Yeah. Because I've played it many times. Okay. I know I know the designer. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I just <laughs> I told like, me. Like, Cthulhu creature. Yeah, yeah I know. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's, I had a hard time with <laughs> um, Brad Bachelor is, is saying that we need a Twilight Imperium, the dice game. Okay. <laughs> As long uh, as yeah. it plays in 45 minutes, like a yes, solid 45, 45 minutes. minutes. Yes. So, uh, and Jamie Jones is asking Helena when we are getting Endeavor the dice game. Actually, Ooh, you know what? That's I could, a good question. I could actually totally see that. Okay, Zach, have you played Endeavor yet? I have not played Endeavor yet. No. Eric, have you played Endeavor yet? I played, I play tested it. Good. Okay. Yeah. So, if you were to make a dice game version of Endeavor the dice game, 
or hmm. of Endeavor. If you were to, if you were to design, you make a dice game, game version of a non-existent dice game. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. Double what would dice. you do? What would you do? Tell us what you would do. Well, I, that's a lot. That's a <laughs> um, hmm. Well, the thing that I think would work in Endeavor's favor is that it's everything in that game is already very thematic like you know there are geographic regions there are specific um you know like different resources that you're that you're doing um or or, or collecting um and in a dice game as i was talking about the rules and the player aids knowing myself i think i wouldn't have problem if the like resources made more sense to me um you know i was like oh okay like you know i need two cows to get I don't know, a, a calf. I don't know. That makes sense because you put two, you get one, you know, that kind of thing. Right, so some um, affordances would be good, right? Yes, yeah, some sort of um, reason why A plus B equals C. Um, so in, a, in an Endeavor game where so much is talking about um, trading and, and making a colony and, and all that kind of stuff, I think it would be easy to build that into the symbols on the dice um, and for pairings to make sense. So you need, you know, a... a Per, one side of the die is a person and another side of the die is a ship. And in order to like go sail, you have to have a combination of the two of those or something like that. Um, right. And so I would need, you know, to that um, in there probably. Um, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, Daryl Andrews is scooping you. He's like, Helena, challenge accepted. I do love dice. <laughs> Helena said, who is making this for me? <laughs> Daryl and I <laughs> called it. <laughs> called it. Ah, uh, too funny. We're, we're going to design it by committee, says Jamie Jones. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Pretty much It'll what we're doing it. right now. So, yeah, I, I think there's, you know, there is a real thing about dice since we're talking about dice games. Um, so, earlier this week, I think we were having a discussion. Maybe Jesse and I were. It might be somebody else. I don't know. Uh, Jesse can let me know if I was talking to him about this. Oh, yeah, it was. It was about using dice uh, over using cards for things. And mm -hmm. what, invari what invariably, oh, yeah. that's a funny word to use in this, but what do you get out of dice that is different? And when De Jesse started explaining why he likes Pandemic the Cure, it's like, that's what you get, uh, yeah. is that, that feel, that rush, that I don't know what's going to happen. It could be any of these six things. Whereas with cards... Uh, depending if you're a good card player, i.e. a card counter, uh, like me, then you know kind of your your odds are different, right? So it's interesting to think about what would change if you took dice out of your game and put cards in them, or you took cards of them and put dice. And that's actually why we asked that question on Meeple Syrup, because we were discussing this. Yeah. Um, so Jess, what are your, what are your thoughts on, on dice versus cards and cards versus dice. Where would you use one tool over the other as a designer? Um, I mean, it's all about, I, I, well, in all honesty, I start with cards because <laughs> cards can simulate everything. But at the end of the day, it, it, it would come down to um, the affordance, like the gamer level affordances of the two things. So when gamers approach cards, they expect to have control. Um, and when gamers approach dice, they expect not to have control. And it's okay, and, just like in Bang the Dice game. That's right. Um, and so I would use dice in a game where I want emotional twists in the game to be out of player's control. And I would use cards in a game where I want the emotional twists to be under player's control. Yes, cool. um, which is why they're popular for, for RPGs, because... Some of yeah. the twists, then you know, the emergent narrative comes from ah, like I missed my swing or whatever. Um, yeah. You're right. I like a, a failure is a good thing for storytelling, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Zach, yeah, what I are actually, your thoughts? I, I actually think that um, dice. I mean, obviously, don't have to be reshuffled. So, say you take the same six options, uh, you don't want to remove that option for later because then it changes the odds of it coming up again. So you would have to constantly reshow. I actually, uh, because of your post, I asked a question uh, in another thread about um, bag drawing. And mm, is that yeah. similar to uh, dice crafting? Would it still do the same thing? If you mm. just kept putting that option back in the bag and drawing, does it simulate the same function of dice crafting? Arkham Horror, the card game. <laughs> 
It does is, what you're describing. <laughs> oh, so they okay, use like, they is, use is they use question? chips in a bag. No, no, no. It's 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 uh, it's homework for you. Okay. Um, they use okay. they use they use a chip pull from the bag in place of dice to determine right. what the bad guy's actions do, and you adjust the chips that are in the bag at the setup of each scenario, and that allows them to provide different feels in different scenarios. But then going back to what um, Sen was asking, like, what's the difference? What's the difference? I would say it's um, it's just maintenance, board maintenance, having to maintain the game and put that chip back in the bag. A die is very easy. Just roll it. It's always going to randomize itself. Whereas you have to remember to put things back in. You have to draw them out. There's just more steps to it. So I think the the die roll just streamlines the whole process. Mm -hmm. Daryl's saying right now that uh, with dice, you can feel control with manipulation and choices. So not yes, me. you get that. Not, not, me. not uh, <laughs> I, I hate you. Did I hate you? It's not even a hate thing. Like I'm comically bad at rolling dice. <laughs> I, it's a, I know it's, it's randomized, and it's I know that there's a ratio to all of this. But yeah, if if you want a good laugh, watch me roll dice. Okay. All right. Uh, and Dave Tome asks, but is the randomness of a deck of cards really control? Only if a hand of cards that removes more, but it depends on how you allow them to be um used right so it's all in I mean, the perception yeah it's per yes. but there's there's definitely a perception piece as well right so do you think it's easier to cheat at shuffling your cards or rolling your die I can, i'm, I'm, I'm gonna put cheating out there i can do both so i don't know <laughs> i don't but i can i can do neither so right. <laughs> eric what do you think well i think you look, one you, of look, the... you look like a cheater <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, cards would definitely be a lot easier. Um, but I think and maybe uh, what, what Daryl's saying is, and I do it, I, I catch myself doing it in a, in a game where I'm rolling dice. You you kind of have like, I'm going to hold it this way, you know, or like, oh, I'm just going to keep shaking it one more time because that's going to really determine, or yeah, I'm going to blow on it. Or, you know, um, it gives you. That, that's the difference right there. Yeah. I mean, uh, it, it's like an RPG player trope. You walk into a game store, you're going to buy some new dice, and you pull yes. all of the dice you like the look of out of the bag, out of the boxes, and then you roll them all five yeah, times. Roll them to see what's <laughs> up. Magic. And exactly. then you pick the they're one rich. that rolls high. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Yeah, it, it, it's really funny. I have a book upstairs that I should actually, well, we should actually do a whole thing on it. It's called Addiction by Design. Uh, it's about slot machines because that's uh, what yes. I'm, I'm quite interested in as a psychology person. That uh, How do we build addiction? And yeah. what you guys are talking about is exactly how we build addiction. Yeah. Just I can control it. I can, Just one more. Just one yeah. more <laughs> shake and that'll so, be... And, and that gets back to this sort of emotional baseline decision of do you use dice or do you use cards? How addicted do you want your players to be to the pattern of play? Well, I mean, right. Magic the Gathering uses cards, and it's pretty damn addictive. But the addictive part is the blind packaging. I know, I know, I know. Which it's the thing is... that's, out, that's completely out of your control, but maybe. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. Have it's you ever seen that's that actually how they, uh, they brought up the spinner? They invented the spinner to kind of get away from the addiction of dice, the stigma of the the gambler mm -hmm. rolling the die. That's why they bought the, the spinner, and it has that family-friendly... That is so interesting. Outfit. Yeah. And Which then yet, that? slot machines. I, I hate to plug another uh, podcast, but uh, it was actually Chaz Marler. No, that's totally fine. I don't. I don't care where it comes from. I need to yeah, know that's this. Interesting. This is important stuff, man. <laughs> but like, that's why. That's why the spinner has this family stigma because academia. it was. It was actually used to get away from that that evil gambling lifestyle. Dice. Mm -hmm. interesting. Dice. Interesting. Roulette. Interesting. The gateway component. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's a gateway component to drugs or to, yes. well, to gambling as a drug. Um, You'll do you heavier said, and heavier games. Yeah. <laughs> that don't use those, though. Uh, Soon you'll be pushing games in the Mediterranean. You're right? Uh, he says that dice, it's about the experience. It's tactile, it's player feel. If you want the dice, if you want that dice, make the player interaction better, um, unless you're tossing, flipping, throwing cards, so that there's some kinetic factor to it right mm -hmm. um and there definitely is a, a kinesthetic factor to dicing um 
Even when they hate you, Zach. Even when the dice hate you. Well, it, is it the illusion of dexterity? Like, you don't... It, it's not that you actually have the control over the dice, but you, you feel... You feel like, like you do. Have like, you, I'm, I'm going to give it the power. Have you ever played a, a miniatures war game, Zach? <laughs> no? Yes. Yes, have you, I have. Have you ever I, had I always to roll like a twenty? Right have you ever roll it and no, it was the wrong decision. Have you ever held fifty d sixes in your hand? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but only while playing Shadow Run the RPG. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Jamie Jones is saying that at his FLGS. Uh, they laugh at how many people walk in with salt water to check the balance of the dice. Wow, people are Trust serious. Trust issues. Huh. And uh, he's saying that having dice during the War of 1812 could get a Canadian soldier punished. And that is actually still true In if you're traveling, by the way. So if you're a world traveler and you are traveling to Vietnam, uh, don't bring dice with you. Huh. Bring, bring a spinner. Bring a spinner. <laughs> You, maybe, but yeah, uh, dice. Even in, even in getting into China, uh, dice are dicey. Like, don't. Oh, interesting. Don't, yeah. Hmm. Don't do it. So now, a do lot you of think comments this... about that? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say, um, as uh, David was saying, and Helena, um, the the tactile nature of of dice. Do you think that makes you? feel more connected to the game um, in the way that, you know, there's there's that that tip of when you're pitching, try to get the components in the publisher's hand as quickly as possible, get them playing, get them touching the cards um, or, you know, interacting with it in some way. And I'm trying to think of games where, you know, most of my experience is, is watching, you know, maybe I don't have a hand of cards or, you know, and I'm just kind of thinking, I don't know if I feel as connected as something, you know, where I'm, I'm always holding cards in my hand and then, you know, a dice game, um, you know, I, I have that, you know, kinesthetic motion that, that puts me even more into the experience. So I don't know if that's just a me thing or if it's, if that tactile thing gets you more, Touching it, touching it, you know, gets you more into the into the game. Uh, Helena Especially said with that it, it brings her back to her childhood. Like dice brings her back to her childhood. Mm -hmm. um, do you think it brings you back to your childhood, or does it actually just make you feel? We did play a lot of Yahtzee, <laughs> so <laughs> maybe. Um, I mean, the whole thing might actually just be like sensory overload. You know, you've got the the touch of the dice, you've got the sound of it hitting the table. Yeah, you're, you're watching it roll as it just slightly turns to that that other side, you know, you're kind of getting it from all sides. I mean, not smell and mm -hmm. taste. I don't yes. know how, how yeah. heightened yours are. But. Interesting. Uh, Daryl's saying that definitely publishers want to roll dice to feel involved during a pitch. Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah that's interesting. Um, and, and that is, by the way, uh, new rule number one uh, of pitching or not number one. Uh, rule number one is don't waste people's time. But rule number two is get people playing your game and touching your pieces, your game pieces, as soon as possible. I had to, you know, put that caveat that game pieces. Um, so yeah, it, it's a real thing it's that a family people, show. people really well that too. People really like dice. Uh, there's just something about them. <laughs> yeah, even if your game doesn't makes, have dice in it, just get a, a pair of dice. dice to the publisher. Right. Question, question from Daryl. Dice. Yeah. Uh, and Sen, since you keep asking us all questions, Sen, did, sure. uh, sorry, what do people, what do you think of seeing dice roll digitally, Sen? Success? That's a good question. Oh, that's a great question. Um, Gunshot. I think, so if you see it, um, I think that's very different than if you see it and hear it and there's mm. that haptic uh, piece. So haptics, yeah. if you don't know what haptics are, is when the phone vibrates. Um, mm -hmm. And I think if you just see it, it's not the same as if you hear it and feel it. Uh, there's something about that. So Daryl and I, by the way, if you've never played Liar's Dice with us, we love Liar's Dice. <laughs> and we will roll super loud and we'll smash our cups on the table. And we love it. Not just for the game, but we love it, I think, because the the kinesthetics yeah. and the haptics and all the vibrations and all that that stuff that's going on it's, even oh ha, has anybody played strike by the way <laughs> speaking of stupid dice games like 
we talked about it for a whole show, I think, once. Wait, Looks is that the one where you're really just throwing dice into an arena? Who said that, mm -hmm. Eric? Uh, yes, Zach. That, oh, Zach. Zach, yes. That is completely, that is exactly what that is. That is. I strange. did play that. It was absolutely ridiculous. I think we played it as like a tournament situation. I was immediately uh, taken out because, again, dice. But um, just a ton of ridiculous nonsense fun. <laughs> right? Right. It's, such, it's right. so not a good game, but it's such a great game. <laughs> no, it's, <laughs> a, it's, great, but it's a great game. It, it nails right? the experience. Like, it, it's exactly what it's meant to be. Oh, it was Andrew. Andrew and I were talking about it. Yeah, about Strike and how he made it up, how he made a version of it out of like a bowl. And they started that with a bowl. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Strike, it's strike, <laughs> strike is awesome. It is also a horrible game if you just yeah. read it. Like no, like literally, if you read the rules, you'd say, "What is this? This is not a game." Okay, in all fairness, you the play rules it, were taught to me. So yeah, I'm very yeah, quickly. <laughs> there you go. Strike is not a game. Disagree, Daryl. Here's, here's the war. Okay. Here comes the war. Strike is not a game. Strike is awesome. Love Strike. Um, but if you strike read the rules, it's definitely it is a game. Literally not a game. <laughs> it is. It's just not a game according to the sort of. Siv, Sid Saxon, whatever his name is, school of what is a game. Now, my favorite part of Strike, by the way, is I announce I announce Strike like I'm a wrestling announcer. Oh, that's uh, <laughs> and that's what I do. That's how I make the game fun for myself. Uh, Liars Dice Tournament at Next Base Camp. Where were you on like Saturday night? That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yes, you know, yes, Liars Dice at Next Base Camp. Strike at next base camp. We will have a tournament. It, that is yeah. totally fine. And, we'll do that. And the detective oh, wow. thing is a super great point because you know I love Skull and Roses to death for its like ease of entry and like um, ability to capture liars dice in a much shorter point of time. But I will mm. still play liars dice over it. If you could mm. take Skull and Roses and somehow give it the tactile elements that liars dice has, it'd be a perfect like parlor game like and, and, and skull and roses by the way does not have a bad tactile feel no it's just it's just playing with you know um coasters coasters it's just not, not the same, same. it's yeah. good it's just not the same which is why jesse and i have been trying to build a bag builder that uses like um basically iron clays yeah, <laughs> basically no. iron clays i have like iron actually clays. two prototypes right now that use iron clays uh if like, you don't <laughs> know what iron clays are by the way <laughs> iron clays are the um the monetary system coins that are actually poker chips, like heavy poker chips uh, from Roxley Games. They are beautiful and wonderful, and we like them a lot. Now, what about... Uh, you do not have 10 sixes. There's no way there are 10 sixes under all these cups. Dude. There's no <laughs> way. <reveal. laughs> 11 hey, sixes. Um, oh, Jamie Jones, you're going to get called. <laughs> he's already pulling out the prototype. Uh, I mean, have you guys uh, obviously played Tumbling Dice? Like that's yeah. a that's a dice game that has no agency. Like I, I I mean, you can kind of pick the direction you're hitting it, but it's still just a fun experience. Like that die face is gonna land on whatever number is randomly gonna happen. It's gonna land on whatever level. It it's that same thing as Strike. It's just yeah. a fun experience. And, and you're right. Christ. I mean, so. My favorite uh, dungeon crawler for a while was Dungeon Fighter because it wasn't, it didn't feel like a dungeon crawl, but right. you were running through a dungeon and you got to use dexterity. And the dice falling in the right place with the right face, you couldn't, you can't do anything with that. It's just satisfying. It was fun. Even though you yeah. couldn't, even though you weren't manipulating it, it was a satisfying victory when it happened. Mm -hmm. Apparently, we need to try dual speed tumbling dice. <gasps> what is that, David? <laughs> what is that? Explain that, David. Explain that in the in the, in the uh, comments. Put it up. <laughs> yes. Shut your face, uh, Jesse. What are you doing over there? I was playing with iron clays. Playing with iron clays. Playing with iron clays. Okay. Cool. So if David gets uh, gets to this in time, we'll uh, post his thing about oh, dual wow. speed. Oh wow. Okay. Two tumbling dice setup. Uh, one each side of a table. Keep moving around, playing one, playing on both, nonstop until victory. Okay, so you wait. So do you need two around. copies of the game? You need two yes. tumbling dice at a store near you. Like an eighty, ninety dollar a game. I, I don't 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's $180 worth of fun. This game was invented by the publishers. <laughs> <laughs> Marketing. Hey, have you guys heard about this new game, uh, Two Tumbling Dice? It's the expansion. It's the expansion of Tumbling Dice. Yeah. Two Warlords is the greatest dice game ever, says says Andrew. Now the problem is, Andrew, that I don't know if everybody outside of convention land, if you've never gone to a specific convention, you might not have ever played Warlords. What is Warlords? Uh, uh, Warlords, I believe, if Andrew's telling, if it's it's a handmade game that is uh, dice chucking within like a castle, and you have like oh. drag, catapults and dragons and things. Oh, that's if interesting. I remember what it is? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Jesse, uh, Jamie says, I love poker chip games to do tricks and clicks with to piss off opponents. Okay. Because nice. you can do hand tricks with uh, those things. Yeah. Nice. I played Risk using tumbling dice. What do you mean, Daryl? Explain yourself. That sounds yeah. ridiculous. Wait, it sounds like a great episode. Anything like Risk Express? Like that was the that was actually the dice version of uh, Risk. Yeah. yeah uh, I think sure. Fantasy Flight turned it into Age of War. Yeah. That, that is right? ridiculous. Yeah. So you are correct. I am correct. I know I'm always correct. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I am not always correct, but I am always humble. Hashtag modest. Right? Uh, f yeah, food fighters. There's some dice rolling in there. Problem picnic. Attack the ants. You're rolling dexterity to get stuff on there. Escape. Problem uh, picnic sounds like a lot of fun, actually. Like, just dexterity dice rolling on top yeah. Like, yeah. I haven't played it, Helena. I'm super sorry. I haven't gotten it yet. But it, oh, it just you know, you sounds know, fantastic. It, it is. It's a uh, Scott Allen's game. And there's a lot of ways to, you know, correct for uh, right. age and correct for inaccuracy and all that kind of stuff. So <laughs> she says she's done with dice for a while. And then she's like, oh, oh. wait a minute, Rec Raiders. And all these <laughs> other things that she has. <laughs> what about Endeavor the Dice Game? Yeah, what about yeah. Endeavor the Dice Game, Helena? <laughs> Dice you put out, a, you put out a, a request for uh, a request for the game. You you might as well honor that. Um, I'm already okay, half cool. done with my sell sheet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> make the sell sheet before you make the. It works fast. It works fast. It's in another tab. Yeah, that's too <laughs> funny. Come see her at Gen Con, she says. All <laughs> right. Note to right. self: need to pay, pitch more dice games to Helena Capel, and while you're at it, Daryl, you need to pay, pitch more dwarf games to Travis Chance. Yeah. Do that. Um, right. Cool. Okay. So uh, here's a question before we end the show, because we're at 10.02, so it's about time. I have uh, eight hours of class to teach tomorrow. What game do you want us to dissect next? I know we didn't go super deep this time. It's not a super deep game. And Zach and Eric kind of miffed up on the homework. So what do you next mean, time, I well, have I had answers. You, know, you had some answers. They were good answers. Um, let's... Let's let's ask the cr crowd to think about what games do you want us to dissect next. Uh, we're gonna post put a poll up on the um, the website, the Facebook page, and we'll get that happening over the next time because we have another like we basically have a four week cycle. So within four weeks, um, we're gonna pick a game maybe uh, mm -hmm. in two weeks. The poll will end in a week or two. We'll say which game we're gonna play, and then hopefully other people can play along with us and join us for the show and we can discuss it in great detail. Yes. Uh, so it takes like the whole hour uh, and that would be great. I would love to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe maybe not a huge game, but something that's relatively yeah. <clears throat> popular or old, even an old game, not a cult of the new game would be awesome as well. <laughs> Endeavor, yeah, maybe. <laughs> so we can figure <laughs> out how to make the dice game out of it. Mega Civ. Right. Mega Civ, oh geez. I would love to play Mega Civ, but uh, that's that'd be a long game for all of us to try to play. Okay, so do that um, on our Facebook that. page. We'll put we'll set up a poll. We'll set up a poll. And then, other than that, how do people get in touch with us? So obviously, you can reach us through the Maple Syrup webpage through the Facebook page, but there's also a group now. And uh, Zach and Eric, would you guys like to tell us about said group, seeing as you are the moderators? Okay, yeah, Zach. Fired off. Yeah. I, I mean, obviously, we're looking to focus on helping designers work on their games. Um, uh, the big issue we've been having is kind of trying to find that balance between, you know, self-promotion or actually uh, giving constructive information to, to uh, people in the group. 
it's it's a it's a tough line to walk. <laughs> mm-hmm. Most of the time, we have a lot of back and forth. Uh, I know people are simultaneously trying to be helpful, but also build a brand, promote themselves, market. Mm-hmm. It's just it's the nature. I think the of types movies. the types yeah. of questions and stuff that we <clears throat> asked here are kind of the things that we are that we're looking for, um, and things that anybody could post. You know, what do you think about? this or I'm trying to decide between dice or cards in my right. game or the merits of each. So um, either things that um, could help your design or, or things that you think could help others. So those are, are good ways to um, to reach out. Um, I mean, Eric, Eric kind of nails it on that. It's questions, ask questions that you can discussion. foster a conversation because if you're just dropping a link, it's, it's done, it's done right there. But if you're looking for feedback, you're looking for information, you're looking to uh, get people thinking and working together and collaborating, that's what I think you guys are going for in the group. Yeah, oh, definitely. And not necessarily selling stuff like a Kickstarter and saying, how's my Kickstarter page? I think that's a little disingenuous. Oh, we discussed that one. Right. So <laughs> we really need to think looking, about... Looking for feedback, right? right. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and yes, Jamie Jones, one day there will be a bell for the dice game. Jay and I have been working on one for the longest time. We just never hit on the magical formula. Um, one day I would like to talk about roll and write games, which is kind of linked to this as well. So maybe so that's what we year. do next. But oh, someday, I'm... someday we'll do that. Has, has Rolled West come out yet? Nope. Case your minstrels? No, okay. Oops. Shh. All right. So on that note, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're gonna call an end to the show. So we'll see you guys next week. Jesse, what do we actually have on tap for next week? Um, spotlight. Oh, okay. You yes. and Erica organize this. Right. It'll be a spotlight with Shannon. There we go. That's right. Shannon, oh, Shannon McDowell Shannon. is coming on. Uh, she is a great game designer, puzzle designer. She works at the uh, Wilfrid Laurier Board Game Design Lab with Scott. Is this the, uh, the escape room? Yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah. excited about this. Oh, I'm really yeah, excited yeah, yeah. about that. Huge so, fan of escape rooms. Yeah, so she's coming on. What you're going to talk about, escape rooms, escape room puzzles, puzzle design, game design, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so let's, let's welcome Shannon next week and come and watch her ask a ton of questions she is a wonderful human being uh yeah. and yeah we'll see you all next week yep. uh zach eric thanks for jumping on discussing yeah thanks for having us and uh i'll say goodbye for erica as well she yeah. wanted to be here but couldn't and jesse and bye erica yeah bye and erica if, later. if you guys if you guys who are listening haven't joined the maple syrup shop talk group and talk shop with us outside wednesday nights Yeah, find that on Facebook, please. Okay, we'll see y'all later. Bye. Thank you for watching The Meeple Syrup Show. If you'd like to help support our show and the podcast, please visit www.patreon.com backslash meeple syrup. Thank you for your support.